2019 looking up for investors. Almost every major asset class is generating returns that outpace inflation in the first two months of this year. That actually is according to a note from Morgan Stanley. This is coming um, as a big change from what we saw in 2018, where actually most asset classes posted either negative or little change in their returns. And visually, you can see it on the full screen there. It's, it's pretty staggering when you look at 2018, all of those asset classes in the red. 2019 year to date, all of those asset classes are now in the green. Some of the top assets this year are the Russell 2000, the S&P 500, the MSCI in Europe. Joining us now to talk more about it, Payne Capital Management President Ryan Payne. Um, Ryan, when you see that graphic there, yes, what does it make you think? It's tough. Um, it's tough when when you have all red to make the right choices. I remember last when you year. have all green, it's hard too. Like, what do you pick? Well, I think, I mean, it just goes to show you across the board, like everything sold off last year. In fact, I think in dollar terms last year, like 90% of asset classes around the world were down, which is the first time in like 100 years. So really, from a buying standpoint, like everything was basically on sale last year. Mm -hmm. And I would even argue into this year, if you look at valuations globally, they look good in the U.S. and they look good abroad. I mean, I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. I could basically look at almost every asset class and say And buy. make a case for it. Exactly. Um, doesn't that scare you a little bit, especially with the bull market anniversary coming in a few days? I know. It's uh, 10 years since the 666, a very ominous number. No, it doesn't, because if you look at valuations, like I mentioned before, the S&P, for instance, is right now at like 16 times forward earnings, which is historically you know, pretty normal. Um, and I would argue... Analysts have set the bar so low this year in terms of what they think uh, growth estimates are going to be that it's like such an easy hurdle for stocks to overcome that that I would think the surprises are going to be in the positive. Yeah, and you mentioned in your commentary that, you know, when you compare stocks as an investment to bonds or cash right now, it just doesn't make sense. Stocks still make sense. Yeah, I mean, 10-year treasuries are like 2.7%. You figure out to pay taxes on that 2.7%. Mm -hmm. Now you're below 2% and inflation is at 2%. You're actually losing money in treasuries. Whereas if I just buy a basket of high-yielding U.S. stocks, it's like over 3%, and that dividend yield's increasing. And if we forget, remember, like 50% of your return over time comes from dividends, not even you know, the market going up. Right. So. And I love this yeah. calculation that you did. You talk about earnings growth in 2018, and you say it was 25%, and that seems like a staggering number. How can you possibly maintain that pace of growth, right? Um, but then you say if you strip out the corporate tax break, if you yep. strip out soaring energy profits in 2018, um, that actually S&P 500 earnings would have been closer to 9 or 10% growth last year, which makes more sense. Yeah, it's more reasonable, it's more right? reasonable. Yeah, and I think that the other thing is everyone's talking about, well, everything's slowing down, but earnings are still improving, and invariably that's all the market cares about long term, right? Are things getting better, and stocks are a slave to earnings. So from that standpoint... Um, you know, that's the number you have to look at. And to me, that's a very, very bullish sign. Okay. Um, consumer right now, you feel they're strong, they're spending? Yeah, consumers in great shape. Um, and I think they're more fiscally disciplined than they were in the past. You know, you don't see them over leveraged like you did pre-2007 uh, recession. Mm -hmm. And you remember, people got $140 billion more in their paycheck that wasn't withheld this past year. Not to mention their you know, wages are going up as well. So for all those reasons... Well, let's talk about that because okay. this has been a point of contention with the uh, tax returns and refunds, whether people are getting refunds or not getting refunds. Yes. The, it's the same amount of money. Even if you're not getting it refunded the way you did previously, it means your paycheck went up and you got more money. So were people funneling that extra income back into the economy? I mean, you have to think they are, right? I mean, if you look at GDP last year and consumers, like 70% of GDP, uh, they clearly did put it back in the economy. I mean, we almost had you know, almost 3% for GDP in the last quarter. came in as a surprise. It came in higher than was expected. So I think that's the story right now. It's just that you know, the old joke is economists and analysts make fortune tellers look good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they always get it wrong, and they've kind of undershoot it, they're undershooting on how well the economy is doing right now. And analysts are you know, undershooting on how well earnings are going to come in, I suspect, for Q1. Right. And most people, yeah. just to make the point also, will spend their refund when they get it anyway. I mean, some people will save it. But either way, it feels like those, whether you got it up front or you got it later, as long as you're spending it and putting it back in the engine, yeah. it's a good thing. $140 billion in cash is real money. It's a lot of money. Yeah, let's be real. All right. Ryan, great to see you. Thank you.